Hi guys. Okay. So I just want to take it back. Just we're talking right now. One step equations. One step equations, if you look at like example one on this page, um, x minus 10 equals three. The only number we had to cancel out on that one was the 10. So it was really easy to do. There was only one number we had to cancel out. Then we moved on to two step equations. And then here, if you remember, when I first introduced this, there's a couple ways I kind of talked about how you know which number to get rid of, the two or the five first. So we talked about how it's like reverse order of operations. That's one way you get rid of the constant first. Um, but another way I talked about, don't know if you remember, it might seem silly or whatever, but I talked about how you kind of sneak up on the variable. So if you think about what X is doing in, on this side, if you think about X's story, X's story is that the first thing it is doing is it's multiplying by two. That's its first thing. X is times you by two. And then it's subtracting five. So first it's times in by two, then it's subtracting five. So when I go to solve for X to try and figure out what X is, I kind of sneak up on it, meaning I slowly get to X. So the, the first thing I cancel out is the last thing that it did. So the first thing we canceled out was subtraction of five. We canceled out subtraction by adding five. And then to um, undo multiplication of two, we divided by two. Okay, so that's what I mean by sneaking up on it, is you look at X's story and you're like, oh, it first is timesing by two, then subtracting five. So I'm gonna sneak up on it, I'm gonna get rid of the five, then I'm gonna get rid of the two, okay? If we look at example number one on this page, you're not writing it down, you're just kinda listening a little bit. If we look at number one and think about Y's story, y is multiplying by negative three and then it's adding eight so to sneak up on y we first got rid of the eight we canceled out the eight by subtracting eight we canceled out the negative three by dividing by negative three okay so it's like you're sneaking up on it all right so we're going to take that same thinking for today's lesson. Now, today's lesson is actually going to be multi-step equations part two. That's what we'll call it. Because it technically does have multi-steps, but they, they're going to look different, okay? So let's just call this multi-step equations part two. Now, typically when I go over these sorts of equations in class, and you'll see what I mean in a second, in our notes, I usually call them weird equations just because I don't have a better word for it. So I'm still going to do that. Weird equations. Let me show you what I mean by weird. So here's your, here's your first example of a weird equation that we're going to look at today. So we got 6x plus 3. That looks normal so far, right? But you're going to do a big old fraction bar because that's dividing by 5. 6x plus 3 divided by 5. That's how you would write it. And we're going to set that equal to negative 9. Okay, so when we're trying to get x by itself, you might be thinking like, okay, can I, am I supposed to try and simplify the left side and simplify the right side like we did on the last page of notes? I mean, yeah, we can check that. Is there any distributive property? No. Is there any combining like terms? No. Right side's already simplified, so I feel like we're stuck. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I know I'm trying to get x by itself, so I eventually, at some point in time, have to get rid of the six, have to get rid of the three and have to get rid of the five. The question is, which one 
goes first? Which one do I have to eliminate first? And that's a very important question. So I think the best way to think of it is kind of my whole sneaking up scenario or sneaking up on the variable. So you kind of have to think about X's story. I know that seems so silly, all right? But for some reason that just makes sense in my head. I first focus on what X is doing. So X is first multiplying by six. After it multiplies by six, what is it doing? It's adding three. And then after it times by six and adds three, it takes all of that junk and it finally divides by five. So that's its story. So I'm going to sneak up on it, sneak up on the X, okay? And that, I'm putting it in quotes because your weird math teacher is telling you to sneak up on the X. I mean, I know this just seems silly, but it's the best way I can think of it, okay? Since the last thing your variable did was divide by five, that's actually the first thing you're gonna do to isolate your variable because you're sneaking up on it. So I'm gonna have to get rid of this division of five. So what is the opposite of dividing by five? I'm gonna multiply by five. Now that looks familiar to us. That'll cancel that out. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do to the other. So you got a times by five on that side. And now that the fives cancel out, I'm just left with my numerator, which was six x plus three equals, and then negative nine times positive five is negative 45. Am I done yet? No. But now it looks like it's the normal two-step equation. So I got rid of the division of five, so even up on x, now I'm gonna get rid of the addition of three. So I'm going to subtract three on both sides. Threes cancel out, I'm left with six X. Negative 45 minus three is negative 48. Okay, so we got rid of the division of five, we got rid of the addition of three. Last thing to do is get rid of that multiplying of six. So I'm going to divide by six to get rid of it. Negative 48 divided by six is negative eight. Okay, so I know that might seem like such a silly way of thinking about it, but to me it just makes sense. You're sneaking up on your variable when you're solving it, okay? So let's try a couple more. There's number two, five equals, and then you're gonna have a big old fraction bar. Your numerator is eight minus three W, and your denominator is four. Okay, so we don't need to write its story out. If it's helpful to you, then you can write like little bullet points of what W is first doing. If you look at W's story, what it's doing, the first thing it did is times by negative three, then it has this addition of eight with it, then it divides by four. Since the last thing that your variable does is divide by four, that's the first thing you're gonna get rid of. So the first thing we do to isolate W is actually cancel out this denominator of four. So we're gonna times by four on both sides. Four times five is 20. And I'm left with just my numerator up there, which was eight minus three W. 
Obviously, I'm not done. Now I'm going to cancel out the 8. That's a positive 8. Look at the symbol in front of it. It's a positive 8, so I'm going to subtract 8 on both sides. 8s cancel out. 20 minus 8 is 12. And when you drop down this term, you better drop down that sign in front of the 3w. That's a negative 3w. So 12 equals negative 3w. I don't want negative 3w. I just want w. So I divide by the negative 3. And I get negative 4 equals w. But as we have learned in my class, proper way to write your answer is variable first. w equals negative 4. Okay, so let's talk about a check. I'm going to do it down here. Let's check to see that w actually equals negative 4. Simply, I'm just going to take this negative 4 and I'm going to replace it, replace the w with it. So I still have 5 hopefully equals 8 minus 3 times my answer over 4. Okay, this left side is just going to stay 5. We're not touching it. We're just hopefully that the right side actually equals 5 at the end. Okay, so over here, negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So I have 8 plus 12 over 4. I gotta solve that numerator first. 8 plus 12 is 20. So I have 20 divided by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Since it comes out balanced, I know that the final answer is in fact negative 4. Okay. Here's question number three. Big old fraction bar. X minus four is on top. Your denominator is three. We're gonna set that equal to negative two. Okay, so if you look at your variable, it's actually not multiplying by anything. Your variable is first subtracting by four and then dividing by three. So the first number we get rid of is the division of three. So we need a times by 3 to cancel it out. Got to do that on both sides of your equation, though. So now I'm left with x minus 4 equals, and then negative 2 times positive 3 is negative 6. I add 4 to both sides. Negative 6 plus 4 is 2. No, I'm sorry. Negative two. Negative six plus positive four, negative two. Okay, let's check it. <clears throat> let's check to see if our answer is correct. Okay, so plug in, plug in a negative two where x is at. Okay, so I just rewrote my equation, but I plugged in my answer right here for x. And now we're gonna see if this left side actually equals the right side. And the right side is just negative two. Okay, so let's check this left side. Solve our numerator, negative two minus four is negative six. Negative six thirds, negative six divided by three, negative two. Does negative two equal negative two? Sure does. Okay, so on these weird ones, it's like you need to cancel out the denominator first, then you start isolating, okay? So, I'm just going to give you, um, here's, here's your homework, here's your practice before class today. I'm just going to give you two questions to practice. It's not bad at all, is it? Here's number four, here's number five. Okay, big old fraction bar. Numerator is 5x minus 8. Your denominator is 3. And you're going to set that equal to 4. Number 5, big old fraction bar. Your numerator is 
10 minus x. Your denominator is 7. And you're going to set that equal to negative 2. Okay, so after you solve these, I do want you to check them. Plug in your answer and make sure it works, okay? But these two questions, number four and number five, need to be done before Zoom class, okay? Thanks, guys. Have a great day.